let's talk a little bit more about phases. The rational unified process phases are a fundamental aspect of this process, and we just touched on them, so we just gave a quick overview. And I want to look at these phases in a little more detail. So what I'm going to do is, for each phase, I'm going to discuss what it is, what it produces, and how is the result of the phase supposed to be assessed, and what are the consequences of this assessment. So let's start with the first phase, the inception phase. The first phase goes from the idea of the product to the vision of the end product. What this involves is basically to delimiting the project scope and making the business case for the product considered. Why is it worth doing? What are the success criteria? What are the main risks? Uh, what resources will be needed? And so on. Specifically, this phase answers three main questions. The first one is, what are the major users or actors, to use the UML terminology, and what will the system do for them? To answer this, this phase produces a simplified use case model where only a few use cases are represented and described. So this is a sort of initial use case model. The second question is about the architecture. What could be an architecture for the system? So in this phase, uh, we will normally also develop a tentative architecture, so an initial architecture that describes the most crucial subsystems. Finally, this phase also answers the question, what is the plan and how much it will cost? To answer this question, this phase will identify the main risks for the project and also produce a rough planning with estimates of resources, an initial planning for the phases, and dates and milestones. Specifically, the inception phase generates several deliverables. It is very important that you pay attention so that you understand what these deliverables are. Starting from the first one, which is the vision document. And this is a document that provides a general vision of the core project's requirements, key features, and main constraints. Together with this, the inception phase also produces an initial use case model, as I just mentioned. So this is a use case model that includes an initial set of use cases, and they will be later refined. Two additional deliverables are the initial project glossary, which describes the main terms used in the project and their meaning, and the initial business case, which includes business context and success criteria. Yet another deliverable for the inception phase is the initial project plan, which shows the phases, iterations, roles of the participants, schedule, and initial estimates. In addition, the inception phase also produces a risk assessment document, which describes the main risks and countermeasures for these risks. Finally, and this is an optional deliverable in the sense that it, it might or might not be produced depending on the specific project, as part of the inception phase, we might also generate one or more prototypes. For example, we might develop prototypes uh, to address some specific risks that we have identified or to show some specific aspect of the system on which we are unsure to the stakeholders. So basically, all the typical uses of prototypes that we discussed before. So when we're done with the inception phase, we hit the first milestone for the cycle that we're currently performing. And so there are some evaluation criteria that will tell us whether we can consider the inception phase concluded or not. And the first of these criteria is stakeholder concurrence, which means that all the stakeholders must agree on the scope, definition, and cost schedule estimates for the project. The second criterion is requirements understanding. Are the initial, the primary use cases that we have identified so far, the right one for our system? Another criterion is the credibility of the cost schedule estimates, the priorities defined, the risks identified and the countermeasures for those risks, and uh, the development process that we're following. Finally, in the case we produce prototypes as part of the inception phase, this will also be evaluated and assessed to judge the overall outcome of the phase. So what happens if the project fails to pass this milestone? So if the outcome of the inception phase is considered to be inadequate with respect to one or more of these criteria? Well, at this point, uh, since we are kind of in the initial phase of the cycle, the project might be cancelled or considerably rethought. So to summarize all of this in one sentence, the inception phase is the phase in which we produce the initial vision, use case model, project plan, risk assessment, uh, and possibly prototypes for the project. And we have to make sure that all of these deliverables satisfy a set of criteria so that we can continue on the project. And otherwise, we'll either cancel the project or rethink its scope or other aspects of it.